Ah, the humble LED. There seems to be something magical about them. They come in many different colors and undeniably make every project better. But the question is, how hard is it to turn on an LED without using an Arduino? Well, let's find out. I happen to have an LED right here. First up, a coin cell. This baby delivers about 3 volts or so and uh, what do you know, it works. Next let's try out a stepper motor. Just fiddle the leads in and give it a spin. What do you know, it flashes, nice. Now let's get fancy. Let's try out a function generator. Using a square wave with a variable duty cycle we can even achieve a dimming effect. How fancy is that? The lab power supply that we built based on the DPS 5015 is also a sensible and effective option for turning on an LED. More to the point, I have received a strip of these funny looking LEDs from a colleague at work and I want to turn them on on full blast to see how bright they might get and this is what this video is all about. Let's start by tinning up the context from a small piece of lead strip and soldering on a few wires. As you can probably make out, uh, we have markings on plus, minus and a third terminal in the middle. So let's see what these things can do. Simply apply 5V to the terminals and... well, nothing. The explanation here is very simple. These LEDs are the SK6812 RGBW and each one of them is composed of three LEDs plus a microcontroller. So our equivalent circuit with uh, an added white LED could look something like this. This is a close-up picture made with my microscope using a 3D printed adapter for my camera. Maybe I'll do a bit about that at a later time. If we zoom in a bit more we can make out the microcontroller with the connecting bond wires leading to the green, red and blue as well as the white LED which actually emits light towards the blue spectrum and the phosphorus coating turns that into white light. For comparison, here is a close-up of a WS2812 RGB LED that was used in a microscope ring light project. This one doesn't have a white component to it. But back to our original question. How can we turn on these quote-unquote smart LEDs without using a microcontroller? For that, we have to turn to the manual. In the datasheet, we have some run-of-the-mill information about the main application field, package dimensions and some important information on the supply voltages and operating temperatures, etc. Apart from the fact that they got the notation for Hertz wrong, we now know that we have a typical data transfer rate of about 800,000 cycles per second. Noted. If we look at the timing diagram, we see that the digital representation of ones and zeros is made with the variation of the high and low times of a square wave basically a BWM. We want to light up the LED as bright as possible, so we want all of the 8-bit values for the brightness of each color to be 255, meaning all ones and no zeros. According to the table, the high and low time for a digital one is 0.6 microseconds, which is the equivalent of a PWM signal with 50% duty cycle. This should be easy to generate using a function generator. We double check the frequency by first adding together the high and low time of 0.6 microseconds and this gives us 1.2 microseconds for the period. To calculate the frequency we just have to take the inverse of the period. It is always a good idea to do the calculation base units, so in this case 1.2 microseconds equals 1.2 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds. This gives us 8.3 times 10 to the 5 hertz. We want kilohertz, so we divide by 1000. This gives us 833.3 periodic kilohertz. I guess it's close enough to the 800 kilohertz they mentioned in the datasheet. So this will still work. So first I'll fire up my El Cheapo function generator made by Fieldtech, for which I actually made my own power supply, as the one they shipped it with has left a few things to be desired. Oh, I also changed the screen because blue is cool and uh, the horrible green LEDs for the channel state also had to go. Other than that, it's an okay function gen, but one of the things I absolutely don't like about this device is that it doesn't remember the last settings and it starts up with the channel outputs activated by default. After I wrote a mail to Fieldtech, they suggested just saving a wave with amplitude 0 on memory bank 0, which loads when the unit is powered up. Sounds good, doesn't work. Uh, here's what the thing actually does with the setting. 
The scope is set to trigger on an edge above 2 volts on single shot mode. When the function generator is powered on, it puts out 10 volts for about 500 milliseconds, which is bad news for any low voltage logic circuitry that you might have attached on power up. But back to our main story at night. We start by setting the output voltage to 5 volts. Then we change the waveform to square wave and adjust the frequency to the 833 periodic kilohertz that we calculated earlier on. The last remaining thing is to set an offset of positive 2.5 volts because our set 5 volts oscillates between minus 2.5 and 2.5 volts at the moment and we want a nice square wave from 0 to 5 volts. All that is left to do is to connect the signal output of the function generator to the data in pin of the LED string and also hook up the positive and negative voltage from a power supply set to 5 volts. And at last we can enable the output of the function generator. The light only comes on after we disable the function gen output as the signal gets daisy chained from one LED to another until a reset occurs, meaning an interruption longer than 80 microseconds. At that moment the LEDs latch the values and apply them. And these here are, are really bright as you can see. Lastly I wanted to show you the single LEDs inside of the smart aggregate and used current limiting on the programmable power supply to do so. That's where the flicker comes from. So to conclude, the answer to the question of how hard it is to turn on an LED without using an Arduino is, I guess, uh, it depends on what type of LED you have in mind. And that's about it for now. I'll see you next time.